Hello everyone, welcome. It is Michael here and we are in Germany, in Frankfurt specifically, one of the better working countries of probably the world and certainly the European Union. We're going to talk today about the subject of international tax planning for Germans. So worth noting right off the bat that the German tax authorities are uh, strict and harsh. <laughs> so, you know, People are often wearing them. They're probably some of the most aggressive in the EU. And as a result, you know, we want to be very mindful of making sure we're following all the rules. So let's start with the begin basics again. You know, okay, what have we got? We have a tax rate that on the surface doesn't seem that high. It's about 15%. However, then there's a bunch of other taxes that result in it basically being one of the highest in the EU, typically 30 to 33% by the time you've factored in all these different things. So good reasons to want to save tax in that regard. And so what do we do? Well, first of all, corporate residency rules here are based on where you have your registered seat based, as well as where your management and control are. So right away, very important. What do we realize? We realize that in order to structure ourselves to avoid uh, or to minimize German tax, we need a foreign company that isn't just registered outside of Germany with a registered address outside of Germany but we also need management and control outside of Germany. All right, so that's very important. First thing is, okay, have proper management outside of Germany. Next, uh, obviously source income. Again, you need to have substance, the income that's sourced. Now, Germany is kind of bad in the sense that typically they tax uh, passive income as corporate income, so capital gains, et cetera. There are some, uh, some cases where you can get some reductions of that, potentially 95% reduction and so on and so forth. So when it comes to capital gains in certain cases, it's not always so straightforward as just a right tax. However, that being said, uh, we need to be aware of what our source income is and not have that income sourced in Germany if we don't want it to be taxed in Germany. So again, the foreign company needs to have a genuinely foreign source income. And we talked a little bit in the video about source income on what that means. Here you can kind of consider that what you would typically have is because very often you might have, say, some sort of German operations. So you'd probably have a foreign profit center, which would earn income, and then it would pay out to a German company uh, for anything, and that would be a cost center. Okay, so that's a little bit of how we do these structures, just very high level. Again, if you want some help, reach out to us, happy to go through with you how it might apply to your situation. What's next? All right, uh, we have to look at the CFC rules. Now the CFC rules in Germany, in some respects are actually not that bad. So the threshold is 50%. So if you, for example, are partnered with some foreigner, they own 50%, you own 50%, or you know they own 51%, you own 49%, something like that, then that wouldn't qualify as a CFC for German rules. German rules also only apply to low tax countries. However, their threshold of low tax is like 25%. So, you know, basically any country, you're typically gonna fall under that threshold of it's gonna be considered low tax unless you're maybe in Canada or Australia or something, right? So that part's probably not gonna qualify. However, it only applies to passive income. And they have some specific ways they define passive income, usually licensing income, rents, capital gains. And so, you know, that's not, not too bad if you're talking about actual operating income from a real operating subsidiary that has regular business income, okay? So that's something that could work in your favor. It's not the most punitive or the most brutal uh, set of rules. So what would you want to do? Now again, uh, they do have a participation exemption here. Typically about 95% under certain circumstances. So there are some exceptions, there's a minimum ownership threshold, which is super normal. There is, uh, it can't be considered trading income, so it can't be flips basically. Uh, however, under the right circumstances, you could have a 95% reduction in tax on the dividends that are repatriated from that foreign company to the German parent company. Okay, so again, if you're in Germany, what would you probably have? You'd probably have a German company. The German company would probably have some sort of operations which it would get paid for, it would pay fair market rate for those services, it would pay tax on those profits, that's normal. Then everything else 
would be in a foreign company, it would be foreign registered, foreign managed and controlled, everything would be good there. You would have uh, some sort of foreign operations, you know, contractors somewhere. As we've mentioned, increasingly we want to have actual people and operations in the country where the company is formed. You would earn a bunch of income. Uh, those people would take care of that portion of the income. You could then repatriate to Germany if you wanted to and take advantage of that participation exemption and go from there. Some other really interesting nuances about the German tax system. One is that typically they don't levy withholding tax on interest. So again, there are some exceptions to this, but potentially if you want to invest from outside into Germany, you potentially have the ability to be extracting interest income. So where is this relevant? Well, as an example, if you want to lend money against property in Germany and the money gets paid out, okay, uh, as interest payments. And there's all kinds of fancy ways you can structure interest payments. You can do different balloon interest payments and things like this. So anyway, that gives you a little bit of an idea uh, in terms of personal tax, et cetera. I mean, the costs are not cheap in Germany, obviously. So it's not the most efficient place to be doing business, which explains in part why you would want a foreign company, right? You might be based in Munich and Berlin and Frankfurt and Dusseldorf and Cologne in one of these places, and you might have a business that's, you know, there's a reason to be here. There's a reason to connect with uh, the local business market, proximity is power, things like this. All right, so as we were saying before we got cut off there, I apologize, uh, proximity is power. And so maybe you have, you want to access uh, say doing business with local businesses here in Germany. Maybe you want to be able to have sales operations going on there. For example, if you had customers that were the big auto manufacturers or uh, pharmaceutical companies, chemical companies, such uh, examples like this. And so you may have, you know, some presence that you want in the country. And then beyond that though, of course, you want to be selling internationally. You want to be reducing your costs through operations that are lower cost, you have, say, lower cost wages, things like this. So you can then have a foreign subsidiary. The foreign subsidiary is going to be set up in a place that has very low tax, lower cost of wages. It's going to be optimized in terms of operating expenses. Maybe it has access to different financial systems. So maybe you have uh, different banking, different payment processing, things like this. For example, uh, it's quite common that, say, you are selling into the U.S., uh, say, online and you may want to have US payment processing so that you can have lower decline rates. So that's gonna increase your conversion rates and so on and so forth. So in any of these particular cases, you would structure it so that you can kind of get that double benefit, right? Now, you might be in a situation where there's no reason to have access to the German market, that's fine. Uh, and not just, it's not access to the German market because a foreign company can sell into the German market while still being foreign. But maybe there's no need to have operations in Germany. And then you say, hey, look, as a German owner, I'm going to set up my company to operate abroad regardless and go accordingly. So anyway, however you want to do that in terms of, you know, it's, there's never one size fits all. It's case by case. It's to you, which is why, you know, we consult with you and work with you to figure out what's the best strategy. Uh, you can reach out to us. We're happy to go through it with you. We're happy to look at, you know, how is your company run? What are your operations? What's your financial flow? How can we save you as much money as possible? And then set up from there. So anyway, reach out to us. And we will see you guys on the next video.